as you guys know, I'm always on the lookout for new first-person shooter games to try out here on my channel. You've probably seen plenty of videos covering new ones that seem to just appear out of thin air these days, and another one that was slid my way this week is this one. It's called Iron Sight. It's a free-to-play PC shooter that's currently in beta. The development team behind the game got in touch and asked if I'd like to make a video on it explaining what the game is all about, and so this is my sponsored video of that. This is not so much of a review per se, but more of just an overview of Iron Sight, how the game works, and my first impressions as well. So if you're interested in trying out the game, there's a link down in the description. Go and click that and get yourself signed up and give this game a go. Okay, so to begin with, let's give you guys a little bit of context, a little bit of information about this game. As I mentioned, Iron Sight is a free-to-play game. It's an arena-style first-person shooter set in the near future, 2025 to be exact. Two military factions are fighting over resources around the Middle East area. The first faction is the NAF, the North Atlantic Federation, made up of the United States and Europe. This faction was the one that almost sparked the conflict by taking control of those Middle Eastern resources. The other faction is called EDEN, standing for Energy Development Enterprise Network. This faction is backed by the Russian government using private contractors to take on the North Atlantic Federation. Now, as you can see from the gameplay in the background, this is quite a fast-paced game, drawing parallels to lots of other arena shooters out there. The frantic action means you're always going to be on the move, and in my experience, there's never really that much downtime in between gunfights. With the game being set in the near future, there is a nice mixture of fictional weapons and attachments for you to use, as well as some more iconic weapons like the PP-2000 and the Scar-H. This extends to your lethals as well. You can equip several different types of grenades and gadgets, and you also get a melee weapon as well. There are four different game modes that you can choose from in the PvP section of Iron Sight. There's Team Deathmatch, Search and Destroy, Secure Point, and Resource Takeover. Now, Team Deathmatch, that really needs no explanation, but it's probably one of those game modes that you can use to get yourself into the game for the first time, really get a feeling for what's going on, and it's something that I looked for when I first started playing the game, and lo and behold, there's a Team Deathmatch in there. I didn't really expect there not to be one, but it's good that there is one, it's a great way to get yourself into the game for the first time. Search and Destroy is actually their ranked game mode where you need to destroy or secure one of the two objectives on the map to win. Secure Point spawns a random capture point on the map, which both factions then need to fight for control of, and Resource Takeover pits teams against each other, taking out Robot Sentinels and Metal Reapers to collect resources for their team. So there's a good variation of game modes in this game for you to try. Now, one thing that I do want to address, the game does have killstreaks in it, but in my time playing, I didn't really find them to be all that frustrating to be on the receiving end of. They're kind of like flash in the pan actions, they don't really last very long, and that means you can return to normal gameplay pretty quickly, which I really did appreciate. We are all playing a first person shooter here, and most of the time I'd like to be shooting with my gun rather than worrying about some drone that's flying over my head. The killstreaks are based on drone usage, and you can pick offensive and tactical options that you can then call in when you achieve the right amount of points. You've got smaller items like UAVs and counter UAVs, you can call those in early on in your streak, and there are much more powerful options like the Reaper, which I mentioned earlier. This is sort of like a time-limited exosuit power-up, it sort of wraps around your soldier. It's got Gatling guns in one arm and a rocket launcher on the other arm. Sounds a bit ridiculous, but because it's time-limited and it has limited health, and it can be destroyed by the enemy team by just shooting at you, obviously it does have more health, but it can be destroyed by enemies on the ground. Things can end pretty quickly, you are quite a big target when you're in this thing. I think the development team here have struck a good balance in offering some exciting high-level items that you can attain if you string together enough kills and get enough points, but there are lower level options as well, which means if you're just getting into the game, you can still start engaging with that killstreak system. 
With this being a free-to-play game, I'm sure you're all thinking about the microtransactions, how this game is going to be funded, and what kind of effects these microtransactions are going to have on a game like Ironside. That is a valid concern, because depending on the route the development teams take with microtransactions, that can massively affect the popularity and the competitive nature of each individual game. Now, with my time in Iron Sight so far, I do think the developers have got it right here. There is a progression system in the game that rewards you with grind currency after each round that you play, and that can unlock new items like base weapons, attachments, and cosmetics. There are certain level barriers that you need to reach before you can unlock certain items, like different attachments for certain weapons, and there are some much harder cosmetics that you can obtain by simply grinding the game and playing games over and over and over again and you can do that if you don't want to spend any money on the game whatsoever and you just want to play the game for free. There are proper paid cosmetic options as well, you can throw down some real life cash on those if you want to. That is the main driver for revenue here on Ironsight, the developers will be selling you cosmetic customization. You can buy weapon skins, character items to help you look different to other players if you want to, and if you're someone who does enjoy the game then I guess this is your way to make yourself stand out against people who are just playing for free and won't be buying any of those higher level cosmetics. I didn't get the feeling from Ironsight really at any time that I needed to spend money on the game to make sure I was still able to be on the same level as other players. And really, I'd only be spending money on cosmetics. Some items even give you new things like different reload animations, for example, different from the stock ones for the weapons, which is a nice touch and not something that I've seen many other game developers do as a cosmetic option yet. In summary, there is no pay to win in Iron Sight, which is fantastic news, not only for the player base, but for the development team as well. They've chosen to operate their game as a level playing field, and I think that scores some significant points with the gaming community. In terms of what the game actually feels like to play as a first person shooter, I think the best way of describing it is slick. Movement is really, really fluid. I didn't really feel like there were any points where I was being slowed down, and the controls are really intuitive as well. Gunplay is easy to pick up and suits the close quarter arena style the development team has gone for, and the time to kill, at least at longer ranges, is a little bit longer than I expected it to be. That means you need to keep your sights on target and maintain good aim all the time to finish players off. It's not like you only need three bullets to kill somebody when they're about 50 meters away from you. You're going to need a few more bullets than that. At range, it is going to take you longer than you think, and that promotes more movement to close the gap on that player that you're shooting at, and being aware of your surrounding as well. Because it is an arena shooter, there are lots of enemies everywhere, you always need to be on your toes. I did feel comfortable playing the game though, the controls as I said didn't get in the way and they were extensive enough that I could match the controls that I use in other games in Iron Sight here which I wasn't expecting to be able to do considering this is kind of like an indie shooter. It had all of the options that I wanted from a first person shooter, it was quite surprising. At the moment, with the game being in a beta test state, the developers haven't chosen to add Ironsight to Steam at the moment, and instead they're using their own launcher for the game, but the plan is that when the game is polished and ready to be launched, that it will be placed onto Steam. I know a lot of gamers out there aren't fans of games using their own launchers, but at least when Ironsight is ready for public release, it will be put right in front of that biggest PC gaming market. Overall, I'm really impressed by Ironsight, and honestly, I didn't expect it to be as good as it actually is. It's got lots of elements of other AAA shooters, and it's funded by a fair, cosmetic-only microtransaction system. As I said earlier, if you want to give the game a go, there's a link down in the description you can use to download the game on PC. Go and click that, and it will take you right to the download page. But thank you very much for watching, and until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.